Okay, let's begin assembling this battery. Um, I'm going to start with my uh, JQ spot welder. Again, the BIFRC is my favorite, but it gets very hot very quickly, and I have a lot of spot welds to do, so I'll use the JQ to start with. I have switched needles to these needles that came with the Great Scott spot welder because they were nice needles. I just didn't like the the, J, the Great Scott spot welder, but I've so I've put those needles on the the JQ, and we're going to see if it's any good. I was using my own homemade needles before, similar to what I have on the BIFRC, but we'll see if these Great Scott needles are nice or not. Anyways, I have the JQ turned up a little past halfway, and let's start making our initial spot welds. So this will be the first batteries, and that'll connect in series to this set of batteries, and so on and so forth. So let's begin. Let's, let's see how this these new needles do. Uh, not bad. I think I'll turn that up slightly. Let's do one more set. Yeah, that's a nice spot weld. Now I've got this tape kind of holding the battery together. I should undo it temporarily. Okay. I don't know, if you've ever spot welded, you'll know that spot welds are much easier on the flat back side of a battery than on the domed top side, and these first few spot welds are not great on the domed top side, so let's see if we can improve. Okay, better, better. Okay, those are nice spot welds. However, ironically, can I say that these needles are, while they're spot welding nicely, are getting incredibly hot. Incredibly hot. I can't do, probably I could do one more of these before I'll be burning myself. So, we're getting a similar heat problem that I get in the BIFRC. When you push this much current, it just puts out a lot of, a lot of heat. And I, I also notice there's a lot of carbon on the tip. So I don't know if I'll have to sharpen these a lot or if I'll end up just going back to homemade needles in the end. But so far, it's spot welding quite nicely. I'm quite happy with that. Um, and so we got to make, we got to connect this. We got to con connect the nickel to here and then do a row like this. Um, um, and in fact, we don't do a row like this because this is our first set in series and then the battery needs to flip over and connect on the back side. So you gotta be careful, it gets a little confusing which cells you're connecting in series. But um, you do two, you can, on this side you'll connect two pairs, skip a pair. Connect two pairs, skip a pair. Um, that's because you'll make the series connection on the back side. So anyways, um, I will continue. Okay, last set of welds here. Um, I've been switching between spot welders and between batteries, um, but I'm pretty happy with how things are going. This battery is almost complete. Okay, uh, that side is done and we have the final four that completes. This will be the main negative that it's that these final four complete. So we just need a piece of nickel, but I think I'm almost out of nickel. Yep, I'm a bit short on nickel, so I'll have to switch to the 
slightly smaller stuff, which kind of sucks, but I think it'll be okay. It's still 0.15, just slightly, slightly narrower, so we'll finish it off with this. And I always like to do two sets of spot welds, just in case one of the sets isn't great. Okay, technically I think this battery is finished. It's a good practice to go back and just check you didn't miss any, um, any spot welds. And be very careful with your nickel. As you can see, I burnt the tip out of my finger. I burnt, burnt, completely burnt the tip of my finger because a piece of nickel touched a previous section of a battery that I had already completed. And so 48 volts flowed through that nickel. Um, but... Yes, I think this battery is looking good. We have a couple little connections that joins these end connections. Same over here. We have a couple little connections that join these end connections. But yeah, my little uh, PCB spot welders uh, worked great. Um, I alternated between them, alternated between two sets of batteries as well because the batteries start to get hot as well. But overall, any of this gear is more than capable of building a good battery. So I started wiring this BMS and I've already made a mistake. I put the main negative here and then the second positive here, but actually the, the second positive needs to go to this side. So I'm already one positive out of sequence. So I need to rewire and I need to be careful. This battery is now 48 volts and I'm touching certain parts of it and I'm burning my fingers. So that's a whole different problem. Okay, I've made the BMS uh, connections. Um, so all of the BMS connections, all 14 of them, this is a 13S, so you'll have 14 connections are made. I've connected the battery negative of the BMS to the main negative of the, um, battery. I'm using 12 gauge wire, which is just at the limit of what I should use. Um, I'll be pulling at most about 20 amps and 12 gauge is rated for 20 amps. So I'm right at the max, but I don't want to use any thick, anything thicker. I'm already having a hard time fitting all the wiring in here. And, um, you know, you, I'm not going to be at 20 amps continuous. It'll be a burst of 20 amps. So we should be good. Um, but that's the battery negative. Then your power negative. I'm building this connector right here. This should um, connect from here. And I might have just made it too short, so which sucks. But... Um, this is supposed to go from here. This will connect to the positive. This will connect to the BMS negative. And then that will connect to the, uh, that will connect to the outside of the case so that the power can come out on this connector. So I just have to finish wiring the main connections and then we, this battery will be done and we can test it. Okay, the battery is assembled. I have to fit it in the case. It's going to be incredibly tight. I know it. I mean, just all the wiring, everything just takes up space. Uh, but everything's connected, so these connections here should be live. Let me put a voltmeter on it. 53 volts. Oh, sorry, you couldn't see that. 53 volts. So um, the battery is hot. The BMS is active. Um, not my best soldering work. Um, should have probably should have broke up my big soldering iron. Some of these 12 gauge solders were a little bit cold on the edge of what my what my uh, soldering station can handle. But it is what it is. We are built now. I just got to try and shove all this junk into this case. So we'll lift the battery in. Careful not to catch the balance wires. It is tight. Okay. Okay, it's in. I want this connection to sort of sit where the lock mechanism is, although maybe I haven't even left enough space for this connection. Ah, I'm already regretting using this XT60. I don't know if it'll fit in here. Uh, I already don't like what I've done. Yeah, I already don't like this situation. Yeah, look how this thing is so wide. I'm not going to... This thing is so wide, I have no physical space. I really don't like what I've done. Maybe I should just crimp it and cut those connections off. 
it'll mean I won't easily be able to separate this, but yeah, this X260 is just taking up too much room. Damn it. Yeah, I think I'm going to crimp it. All right, I'll be back. Okay, I crimped these connections, removing the XT60. It, it does take up less space, although this is still going to be incredibly tight. Um, we need to fit these kind of between. Okay, I think that's good. And then we will push this on top here. Oh, I got to get the charge. I got to get the charge leads in. This thing is tight. Tight. Okay. It sort of wants to close. I need to see now what is catching here. Yeah, I really should not have brought this. You know what? Let me push this lead down the side. I think this lead is getting squished. Let me push this lead. Let me cut this tape and push this lead down the side. Maybe actually I should push the black, if I can fit it, maybe I should push the black lead down the side. Although now it's really uh, probably, probably squishing too much. Is that better or worse? Let's see here. Yeah. Uh, close, but now I got this problem where I'm catching on something. Yeah, this is tough. Let me put you on time lapse and I'll figure it out. Okay, she's screwed together, pretty much closed. Um, I definitely did have to squeeze a little bit, but I don't think I've pinched any wires. I think it'll be okay. The battery meter shows full, which this is almost full. Um, and like I said, we should still have the we should still have good voltage coming out this connector here, which we do. So I can mount this on the bike and put it on charge and give it a test. So I actually had to reopen the case because the uh, charging plug was bad. So I actually had to reopen and change out this charging plug. But we got a new charging plug. And you can see the charger is charging now. I advise you to do your initial charge outside in case you've miswired or anything or any or the BMS doesn't work. You don't want an untested battery to be charging inside indoors because most likely the fire if there's a fire to happen, it'll happen during charge. So after all of that, I have a problem. I can't easily mount this on my frame. The, the, uh, the water bottle mount is here and here. And this is as high up as I can get it in the frame. Obviously there's space and I can get it, I could move it further up, but the, the bottom water mount bolt goes in here so we are as you know that is as high as it can go if I want to use that bottom mount which is fine here's the problem and let me not short now I just dropped this in here let me not short the battery out because it is okay and in this position if I load the battery The battery is not yet all the way slid down and it's already hitting the crossbar. I need the mount to be higher up so that the battery can lock into place and slide further down. But as you can see right now, I'm already running into the, into the mount. So I have a problem. My only choice is to only use a single bolt from the um, water bottle holder and 
um, shift this up and not use the bottom mount because the bottom mount runs into where where the electronics are. That sucks. I really don't want to run as just a single bolt. Okay, I'm not happy about it, but what I've done is I've used the top water bottle mount and I've actually sunk a self-tapper, drilled a new hole into the aluminum with a self-tapper. And I think that has lifted the frame up high enough to clear and to sit the battery in place. So let's, well, I guess we'll do it live. I haven't tested this yet. Let's see. Uh, makes it by about one millimeter. Now I should be able to turn the, uh, oh, the lock doesn't run a lock. So are we not, are we not fully seated? We look almost fully seated. Why doesn't the, oh, there we go. Okay. I guess that'll work. So I had to sink a self tapper into the aluminum, but um, yeah, the battery is mounted.